what I want to do now is add some information to my footer, my table footer. And what I'm going to do is, well, what I think is most appropriate to do in there is put some kind of like legal jargon about um, copyright and all rights reserved kind of stuff since I'm going to be hosting some kind of clickable music on here. Now, I'm not worried about it because I'm just going to link to a public site that's already doing it legally. Um, but just good practice, I guess, to put it in there, or if, if not good practice for life, just good practice for future designs when you're doing them for people who may be dealing with other people's copyrights. You always want to put that little warning. So I went to some website and just looked up their terms of service and got the legal jargon, and I am going to put that right in my T foot. So here's the, the content that says all that stuff, um, whatever that is, and the first thing I don't know what happened is, okay, the very first thing I didn't do is I didn't make this a table row. You always got to st start it off with a table row. And then in there is going to be your table data, right? And my table data is um, that legal jargon. And then I'm going to close that out. And now I should have a nice... Um, terms of use thing going on over there. Okay. Now what just happened over here? I, I put in my that, that bottom footer and everything got all screwed up. This is certainly not what I was expecting, right? I'm looking to go more for something like this where the whole text runs straight across all of the um, the entire table, like so. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Each one of our table rows has four different columns set up over here. So each table, each row has four separate ta table data cells. And now our footer only has one. So basically what the HTML is expecting is only to fill up one cell. And just because we filled it up with all this stuff here, doesn't mean that it just means that it's going to push over all the, the other three cells to the right. But now there's a way to get past this. And what we're going to do is add a, a different element to, or a different attribute to table data. And that's something called um, call span for column span. And then it's going to have it in quotes and it's, going to, and it's going to wait for a value to put in. And I'm going to put in four. The reason I'm putting in four is I want this uh, row to span four columns. So once I go back here, as soon as I refresh, what I'm expecting to happen is to have all of this text over here span the entire table. Let's see if that's the case. Okay, exactly right. That's exactly what I was expecting. And you know what the good thing is, is that now that we have this table row down here, we have a hook in case we ever want to do anything at the bottom end of the table. We have a hook to set in for our CSS to be able to edit that style if need be.